What's up guys? We're starting the FA20 build here. I have none of the parts necessary to do it, except for this flex hone and this WD-40. So we're gonna go ahead and hone both halves of the engine, and then we'll pick back up the video later when I have all of the parts to rebuild it. It's not that difficult to hone cylinders. Just uh, go I for it, it doesn't home. take much. This is exactly what I did on my Civic. I don't have any oil blow by or anything like that. That'll allow your rings to seat. What's up guys, I'm in my basement right now. I got one head there, one in a bag down here. And that is because I found a Toyota dealership that is willing to take just the heads and do the valve spring recall for me so that they're not putting it together. They're just putting the springs on and then I'm putting everything back together. It is against their policy. So I'm not going to say which dealership is doing it for me, but they're going to go ahead and mark the safety recall as done too. So I'll stop getting notices in the mail, which will be really nice. But I just wanted to give you guys that update so you know that while you won't see me replacing the valve springs in this video, they are being replaced. What's up guys, now that we got these honed, we're gonna go ahead and clean up all the RTV off of all the mating surfaces. I'm gonna do that now before I start putting things together, just in case dust particles or anything get inside the engine, we can blow those out and everything will be perfectly fine. So I imagine this is gonna take me quite a while because three out of the four sides of each of these case halves have sealing surfaces on the mating surfaces that are co covered in RTV. So we need to go ahead and get all of that off and we need to get the head gasket. I imagine the head gasket material is going to be the hardest to get off. So this is gonna take a little bit of elbow grease. I have brake cleaner and carb cleaner, just in case. I'm gonna start with the brake cleaner and move to the carb cleaner. If I need it, I will be wearing gloves. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get half of this thing on the engine stand and start working at that. I got it on the stand now. I'm gonna go ahead and take the bearings out and start cleaning off all the surfaces.
Okay, there, uh, this half is done. And as you can see, there's some parts that I think are exposed outside. It was hard to tell with the head gasket on, but um, that didn't want to clean up very easily. So I just cleaned them up as best as I could by hand on the head gasket side, just in case. On the other side, sometimes those parts I would hit with this air disc right here, which I don't recommend you using one of those to do like the whole head or something. That would be, that would actually wear off a lot of the material. So definitely do this by hand. Um, I ended up using the, the green scrubby because the blue scrubbies, they do still leave residue. I believe they're made of plastic instead of, I believe these are like some kind of metal or have metal in them. So I understand why people wouldn't want to use those. But anyway, uh, but after I finished, I went ahead and blew out all the dust and wiped everything down with brake cleaner. Take a look at this side too. All the surfaces look nice and clean. On this side, I did clean up this a little bit. I do have a new gasket for here. And then on the bottom, here's the bottom side. I made sure to get made sure to get all the RTV out of these channels. Right here and right there. And then over here. Um, there was a little bit of damage right here. I don't know exactly how that happened, but I ground the lip off. So at least it's kind of like negative now and that can be filled with RTV. Yeah, I do. I believe I had some damage on this ear right here too that I ground down. To grind it down, it was like sticking up. This side, I think I hit it with a hammer and then smoothed it out with this disc. And I think that it should be fine. So now this half is done. I have to go ahead and work Man, I don't know why nothing's focusing. I gotta go ahead and work on that half. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and start on the second half now. Okay, so that honestly took hours. Worked on this over the span of a few days and the block is all clean. It's not completely perfect because I didn't want to take that thing to it 100%. So on the really hard, tough parts to get like right here on the, along the edge, I probably hit it with that a little bit, but not on the inner edges at all. I used just scotch right. So same thing over here. It's not completely perfect, but I didn't want to take any material off. So I got it as best as I can. So the RTV should be able to seal all the way around. I probably did a little bit more of a thorough job on this side, but it was taking so much longer. Next up is to plastic gauge everything. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the new crank and the new rod and get the old rods out and uh, probably set everything up right here on this cardboard since I don't have a workbench. And we are gonna plastic gauge the crank the rods to the crank on this cardboard and then uh, we will go ahead and plastic gauge the crank inside of the block. Realistically I probably don't need to plastic gauge because it is a new crank and all new bearings but I just want to double check just to be sure. So I got a brand new rod right here and I'm a little bit nervous because these are all numbered differently. When I looked up the part number online they look to all be the same. Now that I'm looking at them here they seem different. So I'm kind of confused. I'm going to unbox this and see what number is on it or if there's any number on it. They look the same to me. They're orientated differently depending on where they go. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and open this up and see.
Okay, so here's the one that spun. You can see it's pretty burnt up inside. Um, but these look the exact same. The grooves are in the same place on the same side and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that they're the same and that this one should work perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and unbox the main bearings, or actually we're gonna wait on the main bearings. We'll unbox the rod bearings and the crank that I have in here. Uh, both this rod and that crank are both brand new from Subaru, despite being in this distilled water box. That's how they sent it for some reason, but I did buy them both from a Subaru dealer. So we we'll go ahead and open those up. I totally lied. I, I bought this from a Toyota dealership. I, I was going to buy from a Subaru dealership, but it was significantly cheaper to get it from Toyota. I think I paid like 460 for this crank brand new. So So the phone died. The phone that I'm using to record this died. I got one done, it's plastic aged. I think it might have slid a little bit. It is still in spec. It's about uh, 0.038 millimeters is about the size of the thickest part of it. And then the thinnest part is still thicker than 0.051. And the spec for this is 0.055 to 0.025. So I'm within spec even with it sliding. So I'm not gonna redo that one, but I am gonna be a little bit more careful now when I do the second one. I have it up on this block now, which is what I needed to do to be able to get this stuff to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do number two now with the new rod. Also something that's pretty neat is I didn't notice this with my Honda, so I don't know if they do it the same way. I did also have aftermarket rods with my Honda, but these rods, well, they look like they're, they're manufactured in one piece and then they're broken apart afterwards and you can see that it's a very imperfect break so they only fit together one way and they have to be perfectly placed together and then once they're placed together that seam is almost gone so kind of neat I don't know, I've never seen that before, but this is also only the second motor I've ever built. And I didn't pay attention to the rods that came out of the first motor, just the ones that went into the, uh, the ones that went into it. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and plastic age this. There's still a small amount of movement when I did that, so it's hard to tell exactly how accurate this would be. It's not going to be perfect. However, I am still in spec. This time it is on the, the looser end of the spec. That looks like a pretty good line. So if we put this guy up to there, you can see there's 0 0.038. So 0 0.025 is in spec and 0 0.055 is in spec. So slightly thinner than this 0 0.051 is, is technically in spec. As you can see, it's, a, it's like in between 0 0.038 and 0 0.051. At the thinnest part, it's slightly thinner than 0 0.051, so probably about 0 0.055. I expect these bearings to be on the looser side because I did buy the bearings with extra oil clearance to help try to prevent me spinning a bearing again. So, they have a, a slight amount of extra clearance for oil, and then I'm gonna run a little bit thicker oil. I'm gonna run 5W30 instead of 0W20. Those two should together should prevent me from spinning a rod bearing again in the future. So I got two more, two more to plastic gauge now, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on to cylinder number three here.
All right, so this one is about 0 0.038 all the way across. So it's a, a little bit tighter than the second one, but also it was like impossible to tighten this without moving the whole crankshaft. So three of them are good. I'm not gonna bother with the fourth. This is just way too hard to do this. It's just taking so much time. I can't hold it down. I know it's not accurate. If these ones are good, this is a brand new crank. That one should be good. I am going to check the main bearings though. All right guys, I've been doing some thinking and honestly, I feel kind of dumb. Using plastic gauge to check parts is checking the tolerance of used parts. And none of the parts that I'm plastic gauging are, are used. I have new bearings and a new crank. There's absolutely no reason that they should be out of spec. I check that the rods are good. That gives me peace of mind. I'm not gonna bother checking the main bearings because that would mean that I have to split the case again and I had such a hard time with that. I doubt that it's as hard the second time when there's no RTV on anything. It'll probably come right apart, but I just, I just feel like I'm wasting my time. So I'm going to skip plastic aging the main bearings and we will finish off this video by just installing the main bearings and leaving it at that. I'm gonna put the main bearings in. I'm not gonna lube them yet. I'm just gonna set the crank in and push the engine in the corner and then we'll pick back up in the next video. So let's go ahead and install those main bearings. I know this was a bit of a boring one where it's just honing and, and cleaning essentially and that's pretty much it there's no actually like engine building going on besides putting the main bearings in and installing the new rod bearings inside of the rods themselves but unfortunately this is just the way engine building goes in the next video we will be lubing everything up putting the block together putting the pistons in at least that will be in the next video so if you want to see that make sure that you subscribe and like the video too if you don't mind all right thank you all for watching peace out